search server is a requirement if you plan to use portal search and have configured portal as a cluster. In this video, I will walk through the steps on setting up a remote search server with an HCL portal 9.5 CF18 cluster. As you can see, here's my portal environment. If I inspect the search settings in the administration area, you can see I don't have any collections or search services. If I did have any collections or a service, I would delete them since I'm going to set up remote search. If I access the DMGR, you can see I have my portal cluster. For the install of the remote search server, we will need a few items. Looking at the HCL software portal, we see the various 9.5 install packages. You will need to download the one you use to install your portal cluster if you don't have the files already. You will also need the optional package for the remote search server, as well as the remote search update for your CF your portal is currently running. Since I'm using CF18, I also need to get the CF18 remote search update. As you can see, I have downloaded and extracted all the installation files on my remote search server. Under Setup Products, you can see my portal install files. Here's my remote search install files. And lastly, my CF18 update for the remote search server. The first step is to install IIM. The IIM installer is located under the setup directory. Once IIM is installed, I need to add the repositories for the remote search install, for the CF18 update of the remote search install, And finally, the WAS and JDK repositories. Now that I've added the repositories, I'll click install. I'll select the remote search server and WAS and JDK and continue. Now this isn't required, but I'm updating the install path. And if you want document conversion service installed, you can select it here. I'll go ahead and select it. And here I'll specify an administrator and password for the remote search server. Then click install. After the install is complete, I don't want to run any other programs, so I'll select None and Finish. Now that the installation is complete, the remote search server should be running, so I can hit it using its host name on port 9043, which should be the default port assigned. Note that during this video, I will be using the regular Chrome window to access Portal and its DMGR, and I'll use the incognito Chrome window to access the remote search server. And we can see server one under servers and the remote search applications under the applications. So here's the HCL portal documentation on remote search service. Looking below, you can see there are many parts and steps after the initial install to get this configured. 
I'll go through all the required steps in this video and I'll show the documentation for reference as I go along. The first requirement in this doc is that the remote search server and portal environment need to be configured using the same user repository. In my portal environment, I have already set it up to use an LDAP repository. Accessing my portal DMGR, you can see my portal environment LDAP configuration here. So I just need to add this LDAP repository to my remote search server. Normally, the LDAP port is 389, but I have portal environment configured using the open LDAP container provided by the HCL portal containers, so I'm using 1389. Once that's added, save my changes. Now this does require a server restart, but I'll have to restart on one of the next steps, so I'll just hold off. Now I need to set up SSO between portal and the remote search server. This involves exporting and importing the server keys and exchanging the server certificates. First, I'll export each key. The keys will be saved under the profile directory. For portal, they will be saved under the DMGR profile. Once both keys have been exported, you will need to transfer them to the opposite server. As you can see here, I created a temporary directory on each server and copied them over. So back in the WAS admin console, you need to import each key. Okay, the keys have been imported, so back to the documentation. The next thing we need to do is add the server certificates and set the appropriate CSI v2 communication settings. Since Porto is a cluster, we need to add the remote search server to the cell default trust store. Now we put in our remote search server host and port and retrieve the certificate. On the remote search server, we need to add the portal certificate to the no default trust store. The 
With that done, we need to configure the CSI v2 communication settings. On Portal, we need to set the outbound configuration to use identity assertion. Then on the remote search server, we need to set the inbound configuration. As you can see, this is already set on my server. Now that those steps are complete, I need to restart both Portal and my remote search server. I've created these custom scripts to make it easier, so I'll just kick off the restart script. Once both servers have been restarted, next part is setting up the search user ID. On Portal, this should already be set, but we can confirm. Yep, that looks correct. Now to map the search user on the remote search server. Under Applications, go to the PSE standalone application, then go to the Security Role to User Group Mapping, and map the search user ID. This will require a server restart, so kicking off another restart for the remote search server. The next step is deleting the existing collections and service. As we saw in the start of the video, my environment does not have any existing collections or service. So I'll move on to the following step, which is to create the new remote search service. The documentation provides the steps and values needed. I've copied out the parameters and adjusted the values in a text editor so I can simply copy and paste. In Portal, under the search settings, I'll create a new search service. The implementation is portal search service type. Then I'll modify the values mentioned from the documentation. The IIOP URL requires a remote search server host and port. The default port should be 2809, but you can confirm the port number under the remote search server ports as seen here. The last config folder path parameter does not exist already, so I need to add it. Note the path is for the remote search server, so I'm placing it in my remote search server's profile directory. Lastly, I'll give it a name and save it. If the status shows a green check mark, then you should be good to go. It has a red X. Either some of the settings are incorrect or you have a network communication issue. You will need to review the error in the systemout.log and resolve all issues before you can create any collections. Now that the remote search service has been created successfully, I will recreate the default portal site and JCR collections. There are multiple documentation pages that discuss creating these collections as shown here. And per this page, we need to enable some custom properties in the resource environment provider for the web content authoring portlet and JCR search to function properly. Again, for simplicity, I have copied all the needed parameters and values to text editor here. I'll start with the portal collection. Using my new remote search service, I'll create a new collection. Since the collections will be created on the remote search server, I'm putting the location of my collections in my remote search server's profile directory. Once the collection is created, I need to create the content source. Source type will be a portal site. The URL needed was copied from our documentation and I've adjusted it for my portal server. 
you know, you can test the URL by just putting it in your browser and ensuring the correct Atom XML text is returned. Lastly, we just need to enter the search user ID and password. Don't forget to click on the Create button on the top right before creating the collection source. Once that's done, you should get an informational message that the source and collection is OK. I'll start the crawler. If you click on the Refresh button, you should see the number of documents increasing. Now that the portal collection is done, let's move on to JCR. So I'll first set the JCR resource provider custom properties needed for the web content authoring portlet in the DMGR administrative console. If some of these properties already exist, just confirm they're set to the correct values. Note, the jcr.textsearch.index directory should correspond to the location of the parent directory where I created my JCR collection. In this case, I'm creating all my collections under the search collections directory of the remote search server's profile directory. Once they're all entered, I need to perform another restart. Now the portal is back up and we have successfully set the custom properties. Let's create the JCR collection itself. Similar to before, I'll create a new collection and specify a name and location. Now let's create a content source, but this one is type seedless provider. The URL again can be found in our documentation and can be tested on your browser to confirm it's correct. With that created, I'll kick off the crawler. Once a crawler is complete, you'll see the status as idle if you click on refresh. Now to test if the collections are working. For JCR, you can go to the web content authoring portlet and search for a string that returns a result like sample. For the portal collection, we can access a portal page with the search bar and perform a search. With both collections working, this concludes this video on how to set up remote search server with HCL portal 9.5 CF18. <laughs>